Number 48. There are two important isotopes of uranium, U-235 and U-238. These isotopes are nearly identical chemically but have different atomic masses. Only U-235 is useful in nuclear reactors. One of the techniques for separating them, gas diffusion, is based on the different average velocities or root mean square velocities of uranium hexafluoride gas, UF6. Letter A, the molecular masses for U-235 and U-236 are 349 gram per mole and 352 gram per mole, respectively. What is the ratio of their average velocities? Okay, so first thing is we have to find a ratio, right, for average velocities. Now, ratios are relative. Whatever you put in the numerator here relative to the denominator is dependent upon whatever ratio they're asking for. Now, it's not really specific as to which direction they want this ratio to be in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the velocity, the root mean square velocity, root mean square velocity of uh, U-235, U-235 in the numerator. And then I'm going to put the velocity root mean square of U-238 in the denominator. Okay? Now recall that, so this is the ratio I'm going to find. Now recall the formulas, okay, of root mean square. So we have the root mean square velocity will be equal to now square root of 3 times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature all divided by m. If you're wondering where this formula came from, take a look. We have a general video out. It's under the kinetic theory of gases a section. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. All right. Um, so now what we realize is that Basically, what I want to do in this ratio here is I want to substitute, okay, this formula on in for each of the two parts, okay? In other words, remember that the numerator fraction here, or excuse me, the numerator part of this fraction will be the uh, root mean square velocity of U235. What that means is that in the numerator of this overall fraction, I'm going to have the square root of 3 multiplied by K multiplied by the temperature of 235, all right, uranium-235, then divided then by the mass of 235, the mass of 235, and the mass of one molecule of that, all right? That will then be divided by now the same thing on the bottom except just the subscripts change, right, the temperature of 238, then all divided now by the mass of 2. 38. All right. Now, what we can do algebraically is basically we can cancel several terms. All right. We can cancel the 3 and the K and the T because the temperatures should be the same for each, right? They're under the same conditions. So now, if I were to now rework this ratio, let me put it back in black. If I were to rework this ratio now, we should then have the square root of M. 238 in the numerator divided by the square root of m235. Basically, since this is in the denominator of the numerator, it's in the denominator then of the overall fraction over here. All right. And since this is in the denominator of the denominator, it actually is in the numerator of the overall fraction. In any case, there it is. So now what we need to do is now we need to basically uh, do our conversions. All right. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that, well, I'll do it out. All right. I'll do it out. So let's do 349 gram per mole of this is for U235. And then gram on the bottom, kilogram on the top, 1000 grams for every one kilogram. And that's kilometer. What? What? Some of you might be saying, how do you convert grams to kilometers? If you could figure that one out, give me a holler. All right. So mole. Then on the top over here, divided by molecule, molecules on the bottom, one mole, this is Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's great, right? So now we have the grams canceling, the moles canceling, which leaves me now with the kilogram per molecule. Right? Remember that uh, that is the number that we need here for M. It's the mass of a molecule or the mass of a atom or of an atom, depending upon what we're talking about. So 349 divided by that and 1,000 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 
And here we have now 5.79, yeah, about 5.8, 5.80 times 10 to the negative 25th. All right, so this would be then the kilograms, kilogram per molecule basically, I'm just gonna leave a kilogram. And this is for the U235. So this is the value, I'll highlight it. This value would go in here, okay? And then you'd have to do the same thing now for 238. But the only difference between the conversion here is simply going to be this number. Instead of 349, it becomes 352. So I'm just going to write that over here, 352. We'll do all the work on out. And what do we get? So we get three, 352 divided by then 1,000 times then 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And here we have now a value of 5.85 uh, or so. 5. Point, oops, one second. 5.85 times 10 to the minus 25th kilograms. And then this value would be the value we would now plug in for the mass up at the top, and then we would do our division, right? So let's, I'm actually, let's do that. So we'll do the square root of the one in blue, so five, I'm actually gonna use exact values here. So I'm gonna use the exact value from the calculator, good. And then divide that now by the square root of the exact value of M235. Uh, so here we have about this equals now, and I'm gonna go all the way out. I mean, in terms of significant figures, I probably should have basically, yeah, I gotta start. So it's basically 1.004, 1.004. All right, and then we would have 288, right? 288, whatever, blah, 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 blah. We should probably cut the number off here. So 1.004. Now, uh, what's interesting, and this would be the answer. Okay, I'll just put this in the box. This would be then the ratio between the root mean square of 235 relative to 238. Meaning the velocities are basically the same, right? I mean, we're talking to such a small fraction. But what you could have done is you could have simply actually just plugged in the gram per mole value into this ratio. And the reason why is because this part stayed the same for both of these calculations and they would have canceled anyway. So you could have actually done that if you te if you test it out, right? Put the molar mass of 238 on the top, so square root of 352, then divide it by the square root of 349. And what do you get? Oh, the same number. Ha, huh, look at that. All right, so it could have been that. That was the shortcut I was gonna do, but I decided to do it all out anyway. Anyway, uh, this value over here represents the velocity root mean square of, I'll just write up at the top, 235 relative to the velocity of 238, all right? Uh, if your answer doesn't match this, it's either one of two things. Either there was an error possibly in your calculations because I'm pretty sure mine are right. Not that I'm never always right, not at all, but I'm pretty sure this sounds right to me. Or you decided to choose the inverse ratio. So you might've had a decimal then 0.999 something. Okay, uh, anyway, let's take a look at letter uh, B now. At what temperature would their average velocities differ by one meter per second? So basically now, what we have to do, all right, so basically I'm gonna erase all this. Uh, can I, should I erase it all? Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna erase it all, all right? I don't think we need, I'm gonna save the value over here, but I don't think we need any of this work. And I'm gonna save the other values as well. Save the one in the box here. All right, because I don't, maybe I'll need it, maybe I don't. We'll see. All right, so now, so now we want to find when they differ by one meter per second. So basically what they're saying is that when the uh, velocity then of one of them minus the other, right, equals one. So which one should you put first or second? I don't think it really matters. I don't think it really matters at all. The slower, the smaller one should move faster though. So I know that according to the formula at least. So I know this one I'm gonna place first. So I'm gonna say V of 235. That's also because the right this came out to be over one. V 235 minus then V of 238. And that should equal the difference between their velocities. That's what the problem is telling me is one. All right, so let's substitute in our equation. So now we have square root of 3kt over m minus then square root of 3kt over m. This is m235 and this is m238. 
and that should equal one. So now what we realize is that we have to solve now this equation for t, okay? So how do we do that? Well, if you notice, these terms have, these two terms have common factors in them, okay? So we have a 3k and a t, actually. I'll pull that out because they are the same. All right, so what I would do is I would write, so they're still under the square root. So square root of 3kt multiplied then by, now this uh, one becomes, this will then be 1 over the square root of m235 minus then 1 over the square root of m238. And that should equal 1. All right, so now let's just start plugging in some of the values because this is going to get a little crazy. So here we have the square root of 3, then times the Boltzmann constant of 1.38, times 10 to the minus 21, uh, 23, times then temperature. That's all under that square root. Then we're going to multiply this now by 1 over the mass of 235. So the mass of uh, 235, I think, was about this value. I'm probably going to use more ex the more exact value in the calculator. Uh, don't forget that this is under the square root. And then this is 5.8 times 10 to the minus 25, minus then 1 over the square root here of 5.85 times 10 to the minus 25. And that's all equal to 1. So first I'm going to do this part. All right, I'm going to type in square root of 3 times 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. And I get an answer here of about 6.43 or so, 6.43 times 10 to the negative 12th. Then that's still multiplied by radical t now. And now, let's do this stuff in the, in the brackets here. So just give me one second to go find the values. So one divided by now, this is the 5.8. So let's see what we got here. And actually wait one second. Just bear with me for one minute. One divided by, I gotta plug in the square root sign first, and I gotta go find the answer. Uh, where are you? It's five points, wasn't it something like 5.7 something or other? This is all the way back, jeez. There it is, okay. And then I'm going to now subtract from that one divided by then the square root now of the other one, 5.85 or so. Just scrolling back in the calculator to find that exact value. And there you are. Okay, so when we do the math there, <clears throat> we should have a value here of roughly 5.61 or so times 10 to the 3, 6, looks like 9. And that's equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these two terms together. All right, so I'll take the answer I just got and then multiply it by the 6.43 times 10 to the minus 12th. And what do we get? So here now we will have, on the left-hand side of our equation, it will be 0 0.036 or so, uh, times then radical t will then equal 1. Divide out now this value, right, of the 0 0.036, so 1 divided by that answer. So this becomes now about radical t will then equal about 27.7. And then square both sides to find your answer. And the temperature here looks like it's roughly 768 or so, 768 Kelvin. All right, and that would be the temperature in which there is a one meter per second difference between the two velocities. Now it says, do your answers to this problem imply that the technique may be difficult? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, this this is a pretty hot temperature, but you know, it's nothing. Uh, nothing that we cannot make here on Earth and, and, and do in a lab. So I think it sounds reasonable. I don't think so. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please help us out and subscribe. See you next time.